Hey, welcome back guys. So we've successfully went ahead and automated two flows for the Amazon website. Now in this video, we're gonna go ahead and do the automation for the auto suggestion flow. So let's head over to the Amazon website and take a look at how we can do it. All right, so I'm back here on the website. Now, one of the common things interviewer might ask you for a website like this, or specifically website that includes a search functionality is to automate the auto suggestion flow. So here's what they're going to say is like simply click on this. And as you can see, you have all of this auto suggestions showing up right over here. So as part of this, they might ask you, all right, you have to go ahead and pick the first one or the second one or whatever, really it's kind of up to us, which one you want to go ahead and pick it. But the idea is that we have to click on this and then find the one that is in the auto suggestion. And let's say we go with the first one headphones for school. Once we click on this, we have to verify that we're able to go to the next page by doing the entire search. Now this one is going to be interesting because the way we can implement this really depends on how this auto suggestion feature is implemented. So you need to analyze the DOM and decide on a particular way to go for. So before we jump on to the actual implementation, how about this? This is an exercise for you guys to do. Pause the video and go ahead and do the automation for this auto suggestion flow. So here's what you're going to do. You will come to this amazon.com. You will simply click on this and then pick the first one. Doesn't even matter. Don't even have to go to the second one and all. Pick the first one. It will automatically go ahead and do the search for it the moment you will click on it. And then you have to verify that the text that is, let's say you clicked on or the one that is showing up over here is actually the one that's showing up over here as well. You can also simply just go for based on when you are actually clicking on it before you do the click. Let's say if I go here. Before you do the click on the first one, you get the text and then you verify that the text you got is the same text that is actually being searched here. So go ahead and try to implement this. The reason I want you guys to do this instead of me simply just showing it to you, because when I show you the solution, you'll just be like, oh yeah, that's probably how I would have done it as well. Or it just all makes sense. But when you start doing it yourself, you're going to start noticing the problems because maybe in your case, you will probably struggling with figuring out the solution, like how do you even approach the solution in the first place? Or you might struggle with finding the elements or you might struggle with assertions, right? Or you might struggle with some weight commands. It can be totally different based on how much you know about the framework or what are some of the common challenges you face with automation. So that's why extremely important. Go ahead, try this out on your own. Once you have done this successfully, or let's say you hit a roadblock and not able to move past a particular issue, then go come back to this video and take a look at how I would do this. All right, so pause this video and good luck with this exercise and I'll show you how I will do this in a bit. All right, so were you guys able to do that exercise? Was it as simple as you thought it was gonna be? All right, so let me show you how I would do this. So I'm gonna head back to this Amazon site. I already have access to this particular search input field, right? We already did that as part of our previous screen. So what I'm gonna do is, is simply come over here, do a click on this because that's how it activates this auto suggestion. I'll do a click on it and then I need to pick up the first one. And that's where the interesting thing comes in. Well, I can't really just go ahead and use my mouse. I mean, that's one way to go do it. I can simply just say whatever that my current position is. And then from there, just move my mouse X or Y pixels down and then it will pick that one. But that's just too complicated. Instead, the right way would be, let me just remove this. The right way would be the, once I click on it, I can hit the down key it went ahead and automatically picked that option for me. So the key to this entire solution is being able to know how to work with keyboard keys. In this case, we are using the arrow key. And once we have done that, we have to hit enter, which is again a keyboard key. I will hit enter and this will go ahead and do the search for me. So that is pretty much the solution we're gonna go for. And then everything else is kind of gonna be the same thing. We'll simply just make sure we're able to find the text and then make sure it's there as part of my session. So let's go ahead and try to implement this and see how it would look like. Here, I'm going to add in a new it block, call this one auto suggestion. Make this in a sync again. And we're going to work with the same search input. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it right here. Now I'm just going to do search input dot click because we have to first click on it. So this will open up my auto suggestion window. Then I have to hit the down arrow key. Now again, for this one, feel free to pull up the documentation. So let me just show it to you. So maybe you don't really know how to do it, but you just know on a high level, you have to use, let's say the down arrow key. So you can search for something like keys here. 
Um, or, I mean, I don't know if you can search for down arrow if it would show up. Nope, that doesn't. Yeah, so in this case, you would have to kind of know that you have to use the browser.keys command. If you notice that, you're going to see different modifiers here, such as left arrow or like the, act, I don't know, shift, alt command, or different kind of options that you can do. And you can see how to use it over here as well. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do browser.keys, and then we're going to use the arrow down, and that will go ahead and automatically map it to the right keyboard key. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you want, by the way, there's detailed documentation. If you go to perform actions and you can go to the official protocol docs, this will pull up all of the different ways you can how, and we can go ahead and actually figure out which arrow key to use. So I think there must be one here for arrow down. If I do a search arrow, there you go. So we have arrow left, arrow up, arrow down. You can either use this one or you can simply just type in arrow down. So that's what we're gonna go for. I'm gonna head back to VS Code. So right here, I'm going to do await browser.keys. And then I will do arrow down. So this will go ahead and pick that particular element for me. And then I'm going to do again browser.keys. And I'm going to do enter on that. Because I will go ahead and hit enter. And that will take me to my next screen, which is going to be the text that we actually searched for. So let's just add in a pause here just to kind of see what happens or is it actually working as we expect it to be. So I'll add a two second pause after we hit the enter. If you're able to select that, let's say be able to do down arrow and then be able to hit enter and go to the next screen, that means our flow is working. So let's run this to make sure whether we're able to get this to work and then when we can look into optimization. So let's run this test and I will make sure to only run this one. So I will add a dot only to this because I don't want to run all the other ones as it will might mess up my existing flow. And again, I will need this one as well because we have to make sure we are opening up the URL first. So I'll then add browser.url at the top. Let's run this. All right, there you go. So we are waiting for it and seems like it wasn't able to go to the next screen. Maybe let's increase the pause so that you can actually see what's happening. The test will pass in this case because we don't really have any assertion. So it will find that search text box. Let's see, find the search text box. It didn't really open anything and I'm back to the same amazon.com. So it seems like it's not working. Now, I don't know if you were trying to do this on flow on your own or whether when you did your exercise, if you came across this or not. I increased the timeout to actually five seconds here. And also I just realized this should I should add an await keyword over here as well. I forgot that. So I just added. Now let's run this to see what we get back. So there you go. So it's going to click on this. And then as you notice, nothing really happened because everything was extremely quick. So we're not even able to see, like it's not going to the next screen. Although the test did pass because we don't have any assertions. So that's fine. But we weren't able to actually search for the first actual auto suggestion entry that was there. And we're not able to go to the next screen. Now, the reason this is happening is because when we do a dot click, we need to wait for that window to show up, which has all the auto suggestion option. So we need to add some kind of wait there. Then we do the arrow down. And then after that, we have to do our enter. So even maybe for that as well, we might have to add in some kind of pause as well. So let's some, throw in some weights here, hard coded weights, and see if you're able to get a test to work. So here I'm going to add in after the click, I'll do browser.pause. And maybe I'll wait for one second here, which is 1000 millisecond. And then after I do arrow down, I'll wait for 1000 millisecond again. So this time it should work because the timing issues that we were having resulted with the hard coded weights. So let's take a look at it. You might see something like this, by the way, like it will not even show you the search option. For that, simply just maximize the window and that should technically fix it. But again, either rerun the test or maximize the window both ways should work. In my case, I'll just read on it. Hopefully that should fix it. And that's part of Amazon guys, like it's their website. We don't really control it. So you might see this kind of stuff being shown up from time to time. All right, this time it is fine. Now, as you can notice, we are now going ahead, selecting that item, and then we search for it. Now we are on the next page. So this is perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. Now, the next thing your interior would be like, well, you added this hard coded pauses. Do you think if you can optimize this? Well, yes, we can, because obviously we all know using this hard coded pause is not a good way to be writing our test. So in order for it to optimize, we need to come up with some another solution or basically an optimized solution. 
So let's head back to our Chrome. Now here, when we click on it, we notice this window pops up. So what if we wait for this window to show up first, then we do all of the other actions. So let's do a right click here. And let's take a look at this window that we are showing up over here. So this window is called this left pane result container. Let's search for this. All right, so it's a unique, so left pane result container. So we'll wait for this left pane result container to show up. This would be a sign to say that, okay, now auto suggestion options are coming up. That means I can do arrow down and then I can hit enter. And then while we are doing this, we also have to go ahead and make sure we are picking the first option from here. So for that, let's hover over to this as well. Now that one is a div, right? So that means if I do left pane result container, add in a div, you can notice I'm going through this different div options, but I want to maybe go with the one that is nearest to it. So I can probably do something like this. By the way, if you don't really know, it's saying just go with the first child div from there. So it's going to the first one, then it's going to the second one, then third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. So there's total 10 entries and all 10 of them are showing up like this. So that's what we would want to do. We'll do left pin result container forward slash, well, not forward slash, the greater than sign div, and then that's going to show us all of the entries. So we will pick the first one, which is right here, this, this thing. We'll get the text for that. Once I have the text, I will verify this text in the next screen. So we'll kind of do all of those things at the same time. So let's go ahead and implement this. Now I know if you think this is a little bit confusing, like you're not able to figure this out, that's totally okay, guys. It's It takes time to be able to figure this kind of solutions. You would have probably went with, let's say, not the div, but some kind of other solution as well. Um, let's say you might have went directly with this suggestion trending container class, and that's okay too. I mean, that's one way of implementing this as well. As long as you're able to get the text, that's all we care about. All right, so I already have this. I'm gonna copy this thing, go back to VS Code. I will add in a new variable here, call this one suggestion pane. And this would be a weight dollar left pane result container. Now here we have to add in a weight. We haven't really looked into how to add weight. So we're just gonna do a weight suggestion paid dot. And I can just say, maybe let's say wait for it to be displayed. So here I can add in an expect block, call it expect suggestion pane to be displayed. Now I won't pull up the documentation guys, because in this case, you should know by now that if you wanna learn something, how to do it, simply go to the expect and take a look at all the assertion. In my case, I already know I've done this before, so that's why I know I can use to be displayed. Once I've done that, I don't need this browser.pause anymore. I can remove it. I'm gonna do the arrow down. I would not need this again. I can remove that. Now, before I do the enter, I'm gonna go ahead and fetch the first search result. So I can create a variable for that. I can do first search result. And that is, I can do it this way, basically add in the div for that. Or another one nice way you can do is, you can just do left pane, oops, sorry, suggestion pane, dot dollar. And I'm just chaining the existing selector. So I'm just saying, all right, after that, pick that first div. So it will go ahead, pick that one, then it will take the first div from there, which is also gonna be the same thing. And then from there, I will get the, and then from there, since I'm using a single dollar sign, it's gonna give me the first div. If I use the double dollar, then it's gonna give me all of those divs that are there. But I just need the first one because that is my first search result. So I'm gonna get that. And then for that, I can just say, after I've done arrow key, I'll do const expected text. It should equal first search result dot get text. So this will give me whatever the first search result is, it will give me the text for that thing. And then I can do my enter and go to the next screen. Now we don't need this anymore. We will add in our final um, assertion. So let's add that in as well. So I'll do await expect. Now here I need to add in my element and I don't really know what the expected search text is. So let's just do const expected. And actually it's gonna be the same as the previous one. So let's do the same thing. Search text equals, most likely it's gonna be the same thing as the previous screen. So that's this thing, but we can verify it. I can just copy this, go back to Chrome, search for something. 
and then just simply do find here. Yep, that's the one. So right here is the one we need. So now let's go back. So I'm going to say expected search result or search text. Can have two have text containing. And what should it have the text? Well, the text is going to be the expected text, which we found right here. All right, I know we did a lot of things here and probably is going to be confusing if you're not familiar with WebDriver.io that much, but well, let me walk you through. So originally we had the timing issues. To resolve the timing issue, we added the suggestion pane. I'm saying, hey, wait for the suggestion pane to be displayed after you do the click. Once it shows up, then I'm saying, all right, now do your down arrow. So once you do the down arrow, it's gonna come to the first search result. I'm saying, okay, now get me the text for that search result. And I've basically done left pane result container and added a div on top of that. Then I'm getting the text for that. Then I'm hitting enter. And then I'm doing the same thing as before, simply verifying that that should match the text that I actually searched for. Let's run this to make sure this works. I'll do npx wdiu, same thing as before. All right, so it's actually, as you can see, it went to the next screen and it's trying to verify the text. And there you go, my test successfully passed right over here. If I go over to my logs, you can notice the result we're getting back is headphones for school. That's exactly what we searched for. All right, so this was a lot more complicated flow, guys, compared to the previous one, because first of all, you had to know how to work with this auto suggestion. You got to know that you have to use the keys command to be able to use arrow down and then be able to use enter as well. So these are all the things only comes with experience if you have played with the framework a lot. And that's the reason I'm doing this video so that you get experience with this different kind of flows that you might come across in a real interview, whether it might be them just asking you a question or whether you're actually coding it on the spot. So I want you guys to be prepared for situations like this. The more you do it, the more you'll get experience with doing coming across these different kind of problems. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. In the next couple of videos, we'll go through the cart flow, which is also going to be a little bit different flow, but a really common one with e-commerce website. Again, if you enjoyed this video, guys, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I would really appreciate it if you share this video with your friends and colleagues that might find this video helpful as well. Also, let me know in the comments below if you want me to try out similar projects for different frameworks or even different websites. Add all of that in the comments below and based on the demand, I will go ahead and create those ones as well. That's it for now, guys. I will see you in the next one.